Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today I'm going to show you the most cost effective class 4 armors in patch 12.12.30. Although the armors themselves are mostly the same as in 12.12, the cost of accessing them has changed quite a bit. As usual, we'll do a quick reminder of how the durability system works for those who are new or have forgotten, so please do skip this chapter if you've heard me talk about it 10,000 times already. In short, the durability that you see in-game on each armor isn't the whole story, as you have to take into account the material too. On the wiki, there is a table for what we call destructibility, which tells us how much damage an armor actually takes when it gets hit by a round. The lower the number the better, and you can think of it like a percentage, so Aramid only takes 25% of the headline damage when hit, whereas Ceramic takes 80%. Clearly these numbers are quite different, and this means that the effective durability for Aramid armors is worth 4 times more in practice than the stated durability on the armor that you see in game, whereas for ceramic armors they are only worth an extra 25%. For example, if you had an Aramid armor with 25 durability and a ceramic with 80, these are in fact equivalent from an effective durability perspective. If each took 40 raw armor damage from a bullet, the Aramid would take 10 after the destructibility modifier, leaving it at 60% of its original durability, and the ceramic armor would take 32, also leaving it at 60% of its original. To compare armors properly, the effective durability of both of these would be 100, as they take damage at the same rate in percentage terms, which is what matters in Tarkov. Nothing changed in 12-12-30 from 12-12, as these material stats are all the same. A few key points to note is that damaged armor protects you based on the current durability as a percentage versus the original maximum. If you have since repaired an armor, the original maximum is what is used rather than the new lower maximum. Also, all armor of the same class, at the same percentage of its original durability, has the same protection against rounds. So for the very first round, the best armor in class 4 and the worst armor from a durability perspective protect you exactly the same for that single shot when they're both at 100%. The only difference protection wise between the different armors is how fast they lose their durability because as we said it's the current percentage versus the maximum that matters and a low effective durability armor will reach zero quicker as it gets shot more. This is the reason why we tend to focus on effective durability first and foremost but even the best armors in a class won't save you against a round that penetrates that class often, for example 545BT or M80 which penetrates around 90% of the time irrespective of which class 4 armor you're wearing. There are 15 total armors in class 4 now, but 11 of them are rigs. The Hycom Trooper is one of the 4 armor vests and is still number 1 overall due to its high in-game durability and great material type which is polymer. It has pretty decent stats, especially regarding low ergonomics debuffs and has the second lowest weight of all that we'll look at today at only 6.8 kilos. This is useful for staying underweight in raids, especially this patch, as it allows you to level endurance, which is a struggle since the overweight limit was moved to 20 kilograms as a base. The biggest issue is the thorax only protection, which makes close combat a bit dangerous with this armor, so maybe avoid factory or the CQB hotspots such as customs dorms with the trooper. If you get magnum buckshot one tapped, then don't blame me. It's also one of the few higher end armors still allowed onto the flea market, costing approximately 100k. Troopers are used in a barter for the class 6 slick, which can make it expensive in the late game. As with all regular armor vests, you do also need to get a separate rig to use with it, which will likely cost at least 10k for the bank robber or a little bit less using the Tarzan barter, but at least you get the choice on how much space to have. The trooper repairs very well again due to the polymer material type, however, these days the best way to repair armor is using the armor repair kits. At 200k they are still great value and repair better than prep or, so the costs of repair are not particularly important anymore with this option which is nice. In terms of insurance, this works in a slightly odd way these days. We've known for a while that prices increase as you level up your traders, and with the help of the community and in particular Sad28 from my discord, we've taken a look at a whole range of armors and their costs at different levels. The insurance price is tied to Tarkov's internal armor price in some way, but the only consistent reading that we have that is related to this is the price that Ragman buys these armors for secondhand from the player. Doing this across a few players at different levels of Prapor shows that the insurance price compared to the Ragman purchase price is 23% at level 1, 29% at level 2, 35% at level 3, and 42% at level 4. The most expensive armor from the game's perspective of rubles is the Osprey, which in turn has the most expensive insurance, and the cheapest is the 6B3TM. So back to the Trooper, this is one of the more expensive insures, costing 20k a prep or 3, and it also gets taken fairly often. This is because it's decent value, but most importantly, it's frequently an upgrade for other players in raid who are also using class 4. 
Only being 3x3 three three also helps others to take it from the raid more efficiently too if they put it in their bag. Next up we have the Ars Armor A18 Armored Rig. Durability wise this is the second best, just a little bit less than the Trooper and it also has fairly decent stats too, with a middling weight of 8.2 kilograms. This is another one with thorax only protection so again you have to be a bit mindful but the issue with this armor is that it is not allowed on the flea and it has very expensive barters currently. 5 whiskies are approximately 200k and the gold skull plus 3 gold chains is also around 200,000. These two are inputs for the scav case so we might see them go down as we progress but this armor is one you typically don't see very often because there are usually better options for the price. The A18 does have a really big internal space with lots of room, although it's only 2 by one so you can't take anything special like a drum or a 40 rounder. With the armour made from combined materials, it repairs only averagely, and the insurance cost is the second highest across all of class 4. Plus, it's quite efficient to be taken as it physically only takes up 3 by 4 slots in the player inventory. On to the ABS, which is the third best rig in this class, at 75% of the trooper's durability, but this is still decent. Again, it has good stats, with the lowest ergo debuff of all the class 4s, tied with the much lower grade Thor armour, and has a lowish weight of 8.7 kilos. This is the first armour with both thorax and stomach, which is useful for more general combat, and allows you to take on shotgun and leg better users with slightly more confidence. Again, this is banned from the flea market, but there are two barters, 185-ish K for the pistol and the neck chain of Ragman 2, which usually isn't worth it. However, 132k using the shampoo and toothpaste version is a little better. You can craft the shampoo, but it's not normally worth it, as you can make something else more profitable like Kodura in the lavatory, sell it, and buy the shampoo instead. The AVS's internal size is really great with two 2x2 slots as well, which can be used for Saiga drum mags, AK drums, or maybe even a PPSH drum. As another combined materials armour, it has an average repair rate and is also expensive-ish to insure. This is made worse by the fact that it gets taken a lot, as its pouch layout is very efficient storage considering the rig itself only takes up 3x4. I still think that paying over 100,000 rubles is a bit much for class 4, but it's one of the best rigs due to the combination of high durability and stomach protection too. An old favourite of the player base, the TV-110 is our fourth best armour and is still decent at this level of durability. It has good stats, but a bit of a high weight at 10.3 kilos, which can make it very difficult to stay underweight with all but the lightest of kits around it. It's another slightly dangerous rig with thorax only protection, but although it's not allowed on the flea, it has a great barter of Ragman 3 for 4 bleach and 2 shampoo, which comes to around 80k. Similarly to shampoo, you can in theory craft bleach as well, but again, it's usually better to buy and craft something else. There is a new craft too, directly for this rig using a Corund armour, which is class 5. I like the idea because remember for crafts you can use any quality of the input item, so this gives you something to do with broken current armours that come back in insurance. Unfortunately I think it's borderline between just repairing it with an armour kit and selling it back to Ragman versus buying two rigs and a ripstop plus the 8 hours blocking out the lavatory. I didn't test this specifically but I don't think it'll end up making sense. That said, the 110 is another rig with great internal space and is very similar to the AVS with two 2x2 two two slots but has the same downside of getting taken frequently due to its 3x4 size. It has a good repair rate being made of steel, however has high insurance costs and our third most expensive. Next up is one of my all-time favourites, the ANA M2. At 109 durability we are getting lower but at this level it's still pretty decent. As we will see, this is probably the best budget rig overall in class 4 but you need Ragman 3 to get to it. Firstly, the stats on this rig are amazing, probably the best stats out of the rigs that we've seen yet, although they're all relatively good at the top level. The ANA's move speed debuff is only minus 8%, ergonomics only minus 2%, and the weight is 7 kilos, which is one of the lowest overall. Also, you get both thorax and stomach protection, which is great for a cheaper rig, given the only other option so far was the AVS. There is a dog tag barter of Ragman 4, but the one that we want to focus on is the round glasses and the Colpack visor barter. This is amazing value as the glasses usually price somewhere between 12k and 20k on the flea. See if you can grab some of these at the lower end. Although Colpack visors might look expensive at nearly 20k, there's another barter you can do for these using chainlets which are almost always under 10k. With glasses around 15 and chainlets around 7, this comes to 66k total and you can get the inputs cheaper than this if you're looking at the right time. For about 10k more than the staple class 4 armour, the 6B3TM, which we'll come on to shortly, we get more durability, less debuffs, especially on ergonomics, and lower weight to boot. The internal space on the M2 is decent, but mostly 2x1 slots, which is fine for general kits. 
Repairability is average as titanium is middling on how close to max it gets back to on repairing, and insurance is in the middle too. However, insurance is very effective for this rig because of its sheer size. At 4x4, it's a tough ask for people to take it in a bag, so unless they headshot you and swap over to it, you can expect to get this one returned more often than the other rigs. It also doesn't have useful efficiency slots like the 2x2s on the AVS or the TV110, so you can't have your own helmet and ears shoved into it and removed from the raid by another player, which I think is a plus. This is a really solid armour, but you have to get to Ragman 3 first, which is at level 32. Many players won't get to this for at least a month or two, or even later depending on how much they play. Next up is the Osprey Assault. With middling durability, everything else about this armour is bad, and I really don't like it. It has the worst stats that we've seen so far. I personally hate low turn rate armours because they mess with my muscle memory. It's really heavy too, at 10.7 kilos, and it has weird hitbox protection with thorax and arms but no stomach. I don't think this is good, honestly, as it doesn't have enough durability to tank a ton of hits, meaning it will frequently leave your thorax exposed as the armour gets damaged through arm shots. You can get away with arms protection on the super high durability armors like the Zabralo because it takes a while to wear them down, but the Osprey gets too low too quickly for this to work well in my opinion. It's only accessible from Peacekeeper 3 for 180,000 rubles equivalent so it's way too expensive, although the rig itself has decent internal space with a 2x2 slot as well. The aluminium material type does give it a decent repair rate, but it is the single most expensive armour to insure because it has the highest trade of sale price. It can be easy to take as well because it's another 3x4 rig with a 2x2 slot to min-max stuff, but its weight I think will put people off. Overall, I think this armour sucks for the price, and there's a reason why you never see anybody use it in raid. Moving back into the better value armours, the ANA M1 is alright. We're starting to get into the lower durability section, but it has okay stats. Not terrible, but a bit heavier than the better M2 version. This is another thorax and stomach protector, so is useful on that front, but it tends to be more expensive than the M2 at around 100k on the flea, maybe kind of surprisingly. This is probably because of the better internal space configuration. There is a barter of Ragman 3 for 4 Aquamaris and 1 Kavas coming to around 130k as Aquamaris are still relatively expensive at the moment. The current craft in the nutrition unit comes to about 25k if you buy the waters from new. There is also a new craft, this one takes two 6B23s which can themselves be bartered for a propane, one ANA tactical chest rig which can be bought or has another barter itself but with the Aramid as well costs about 120k altogether so not worth bothering with I don't think, at least not at the moment. The internal size is where this rig shines, with two 2x2 slots coming in very handy. Also, as this one is armour steel, it has a better repairability than the M2, with the same middling insurance costs. As another 4x4 rig, this is unlikely to be taken as well, so it has great slot value for you as the wearer, but less useful to your opponents who might try to pick it up if you die with it. Next is the MMAC, which was the darling of the last patch, but has taken a bit of a beating cost-wise. This has durability almost the same as the M1, with thorax only protection and good move stats, although the ergo debuff is a little on the high side. On the flip side, its weight is very low, making it another useful rig for creating kits to train endurance. The MMAC is banned from the fleet, but the amazing barter from 1212 has been adjusted to add a whiskey. These are about 40k, so really hurts this as a budget choice, as it's more like 80k now versus 40 previously. At Ragman 2, honestly, it probably was just too cheap before. The internal space is okay with 6 2x1s but nothing special here, however it does repair extremely well due to the polymer material type, notably the only other one other than the Trooper, and insurance is also one of the cheapest overall. Like the Trooper 2, it's only 3x3 so it can be taken fairly easily by other players, especially with its low weight. The MMAC can still be an option because there are few choices at level 2 traders for class 4 armour, but once you get to Ragman 3 and get a wider variety of armours to choose from, it has lost its luster somewhat for the super budget kits. Next we have a brand new rig the Eclipse, which sits between the MMAC and the Strandhog which we'll talk about afterwards. It has great move speed and middling stats on turn rate and ergo which is good, and is another fairly low weight rig at 75 kilos. With stomach protection unlike the MMAC, it's better for CQB maps like Factory, but unfortunately the only way to buy it is the Ragman 3 barter for a military flash drive. This costs well over 150k on the fleet, and although they can be crafted as well, this also costs 180,000 rubles. You're basically never going to see this rig until flash drive prices come down. The primary use is Intel Center 3 where you need 5 of them, so maybe we will see this cheapen as we progress, but for now it doesn't make sense to do. Otherwise, it has decent internal size with one 2x2 slot, is titanium for middling repairability, and its insurance is in the middle to high end of the range. As a 3x4, it can fit in a bag, but the slot ratio is not that great, so it might put people off taking it. 
Onto the Strandhog, we're getting very close to the durability of the 6B3TM at this point, but it does have very nice stats, especially the low move speed penalty of 6%, and it is in fact the lightest rig out of the entire class 4 selection. Thorax and stomach protection is nice, and similarly to the MMAC, this is another one that had a cracking barter in 12.12 that was downgraded a bit in this patch. The Strandhog wasn't quite as badly touched with just a vodka being added, which usually prices about 25k, making it around 85k total now, similar to the MMAC, and I think is a fair price for this armour. You can also craft the Kajura for this barter, and because it's one of the better ones in the laboratory too, you're not missing out on opportunity cost by doing so to use it yourself, as you were probably doing that craft anyway. It has a decent internal size, with one 2x2 slot as well, it repairs well with its aluminium material, and it sits right in the middle on insurance costs. Honestly, it's a decent pickup for good stats on this rig. On to the 6B3TM, otherwise known as the Rat Rig, which has lowish durability, but it's not that awful. Its stats are average, except for the Ergo debuff, which is pretty nasty at minus 15%, which is the biggest downside, along with high weight 2 at 9.2 kilos. You do get stomach protection with this one too, however the Rat Rig shines primarily on costs, because you can buy it from Ragman 2 at 55k. This really is the baseline for class 4 protection at level 2 traders, in my opinion, that all the others should be measured against. There is one barter where four damaged ones can be turned into a single brand new one, but normally it's cheaper to use repair kits to fix the broken ones, sell them back to Ragman and buy a new one instead from him with the money. I tested this out with buying a broken one from Fence, repaired it for the equivalent of 5.1k with a repair kit and sold it to Ragman for 21.5, and that was for one with 30 max durability. The first single repair comes to around 37 out of 40, which Ragman pays 26k for, so 4 of those nets you 84,000 rubles instead, which lets you buy a new one with cash left over. Hence, it's only really worth it if you have rigs coming back that have been repaired 3 times or so or more. You can buy the armour on the fleet as well, normally it's too expensive, but sometimes you can pick up a bargain. Also, be aware that Ragman does sell out of this rig in peak hours. It's not instant, but it can cause the fleet to spike in price for an hour or so before he restocks. The Rat Rig's internal size is pretty small, but good enough for budget runs when you aren't taking too much anyway. As we saw, its repair rate is only average with titanium, but the insurance cost is really really low, the cheapest of all the armours in class 4. It's also very rare to get these taken, as although it's 3x4, it only has a 1 to 1 slot to space ratio and is very heavy to boot. I get these back all the time, even on factory, hence why this is probably the best budget rig for most players, and definitely at level 2 traders. You should only look to move up to the other class 4 rigs if you feel that you need A, higher durability, B, better weight, or C, you're modding your guns for ergonomics and the 15% penalty is going to hurt too much. On to our final 4 with the NFM Thor. This has about the same effective durability as the Rat Rig and is one of the few vests rather than rigs in class 4. Interestingly, it has the best move speed of all the armors in this category and its other stats are good too, except for weight which is on the heavier side at 9 kilos. We get stomach protection along with thorax on the thor which is nice, but we can only buy it from Ragman 3 for 56k. This is an okay price, but I don't think it's very useful at Ragman 3 as there are better options, although it is available on the Flea 2 and sometimes a little cheaper. As with all armour vests, we need a rig to go with it, so it's a touch more expensive than it looks, and although being combined materials making it average to repair, it's in fact the second cheapest on insurance. Also, it's very unlikely to be taken except by Hungry Scavs, as it's not a rig, so it has zero packing potential with no internal space. The Thor could be an option for, say, Punisher 4, where you have to wear a scav vest and a regular armour, as you aren't allowed to wear rigs, but personally, I think it comes in too late in the trader progression to be that useful. The final three armours are all pretty bad on durability due to their ceramic materials, however the 6B23-2 is the best of the worst. The stats are kinda bad, but the weight is pretty low, and the stomach protection is alright. Ragman 3 sells these for 76k, but given the Thor and the other armors exist, why would we ever get this? The Flea agrees with me too, selling below the trader price. As it's a vest, again we'd need a rig separate, it repairs badly as it's ceramic, and with middling insurance costs, I think this armor sucks as well. Now the 6B5 Ulay is the second worst in class 4. Terrible stats with the worst move speed, horrible ergo debuffs, and the heaviest armor too, but at least we get thorax and stomach protection. The one redeeming feature of this armour is that firstly you can get it on the flea, and secondly that it is very, very, very cheap. Under 40k for class 4 is almost compelling for really budget runs, and there is a barter too for soap and paper that costs about 50k as well. There is a new craft for this armour that I think is not worth it, it takes too long and needs another class 4 armour as an input. The only time that I think this ever makes sense is before you have the flea, maybe, and you need to min-max your insurance returns. 
The internal size is bad on the Yule, less than the space that it takes up, and it repairs really badly like the other ceramic armors, but it is the third cheapest to ensure. It's by far the most budget option in class 4 if price is everything, so maybe a pistol questing rig, but you have to take a lot of downsides where I'd rather use the 6B3TM. Finally, we have the 6B13, the worst class 4 armor on effective durability. There are two types of this, the digital flora and the regular flora. Although its stats are bad on move speed and minus 12% in weight, the others are actually okay, and we get stomach again here too. Digital flora costs 68k on Ragman 3, which is better than regular flora at 78k of Ragman 2, but it is still way too high. The flea has them down at 35k or so, although admittedly these are mostly partly broken as they come on scavs all the time. You still need a separate rig, it repairs badly, and insurance is on the lower end, but it's not that cheap really. Basically, only use this one if you have no other class 4s available. So overall, which are the winners this patch? On level 2 Ragman, the 6B3TM is the clear choice once again, with its low price, alright stats, low insurance costs, and high return rate. It's not the best armour by any means, but it's a good staple if you're not feeling very creative and or a little bit lazy. The MMAC is still an option if the 6B3TM is sold out, or you want a bit more durability on bigger maps. I would really advise against using it close up because of the lack of stomach protection, and this will get you killed eventually, but at longer ranges you can work with it. At Ragman 3, the Strandhog is a decent upgrade, as well as the TV-110 Barter if you don't mind thorax-only protection, but the clear winner here for me is the ANA M2 with its insane barter price and the best stats of all the budget rigs. Finally, for the ultimate class 4 protection, the ABS is probably the best overall if you exclude price because of the stomach protection, but a trooper from the fleet is very very easy, high durability and costs a little bit less. For the rounds that it protects you against, it will protect you very well, but again, be mindful of the lack of stomach protection. So next up, go and watch my underweight kits video if you're struggling to level endurance in 12-12-30 as we build on the topic of weight in order to stay under the threshold and get points into this skill. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.